Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. And before we move on to the Hobby Next Phase 2023 Spring Edition and all of the Gunpla releases, I would like to take a moment to show you who got featured on this week's Gundam.info Community Spotlight. I'm like totally pinning that tweet. <laughs> so the Gunpla that were announced, which by the way are also all up for pre-order on Hobby in Japan, linked down below. So first up, the regular releases for July. Uh, we'll be getting a new Witch from Mercury Gunpla for 2200 yen, 17 US. But that is literally everything that we know. Uh, the picture they used is just the Witch from Mercury logo and its name is the Witch from Mercury new product B. So hopefully we'll get some more information on that soon. Uh, fortunately, we do know more about the second kit, the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Unicorn Gundam Unit 2 Banshee Destroy Mode and Banshee Norn Part Set. And well, that name wraps up very nicely what this kit is all about. Um, as part of the Cross Silhouette line, you can either make the Banshee as a traditional, more squished, super deformed kit, or in the bigger and leaner cross silhouette style. And in terms of accessories, we get two beam savers, a shield that can go either on the arm or on the back, um, beam smart gun, vibro nail, beam magnum with optional revolving launcher, and backpack parts for the Norn. And all of this stuff does of course make it slightly more expensive than your usual super deformed kit with a retail price of 2200 yen 17 us for august then we went big with the full mechanics 1 100 scale forbidden gundam the model kit that we all saw coming but we just weren't sure when it was going to be coming <laughs> Um, as with all of the full mechanics, the design is nice and bulky and has all of the extra detailing that we'd expect from a Master Grade-esque kit. Also, spoiler warning, there were no Master Grades, as unfortunately we've gotten used to. But putting that aside, I do really like what they did with the energy cable, something that was also present on the high grade but not really noticeable because it was simply molded together with uh, the joints. And now I don't know what it is about the cables drooping down in standby mode but I really like it. I guess it just adds that little extra touch of weight and realism to the model kit. And for 6,380 yen, 49 US, this thing can be yours. But now the real question is, what is going to be next? Because now we have the trio of Gundam Seed. So are they going to be moving on to the trio from Gundam Seed Destiny, the Gaia, Chaos and Abyss? Are they going to focus on other Gundam Seed machines like uh, for example, a Saigu to go with the Master Great uh, Jin, or are we maybe going to see some variants of the Calamity and the Forbidden, which is definitely something I would love to see because we are so overdue an official full model kit of the uh, Sword Calamity and Forbidden Blue. Like, I know about the conversion kit, but it would be nice to just have a full modern version. And in September then, we're getting the real great Epion for 4,620 yen, 35 US. I was honestly expecting the Wing Zero TV version to get a real great before the Epion, but it is still a nice surprise all the same. And I'm also certain that the Epion's design will make for a very nice real great. There's already a lot of small pointy details on the Epion's line art and now that it's a real great there's even more detail. Not to mention that the heat rod is also perfect for the advanced MS joint system. I also don't think I've ever seen the feet look so dragon-like in their transformation. They kept the master grade gimmick of having an opening mouth, but now we also have some moving horns. 
they really went all the way with the dragon motif on the transformation. And in addition to those regular releases, they also announced two premium Bandai kits that will be up for pre-order in April. The high-grade, high-mobility Zaku Surface Type Walt Custom and Selma Custom. And then on the same day, we also got three other Gunpla announcements that weren't part of the event. The first was that on April the 22nd, the real great MSN 04 FF Sazabi will become available at Gundam Site F in Fukuoka. The main body will be a remold of the regular real grade, as well as the shield, beam rifle, beam sabers, and beam tomahawk, but the giant funnels will of course be completely new. And these giant lobster claw-esque funnels can either be used over the shoulders as handheld weaponry or shot out thanks to the included action base. Unfortunately though, even though we get two of those giant funnels, we only get one beam effect part. And if you're wondering what that second new beam effect part then is for uh, the pink one, that is for the new Gundam's long-range fin funnel and not for the Sazabi. But regardless, this whole set can be yours for 8,580 yen, 65 US. And they also announced that on May the 3rd, the BB Senshi Amazon, FF, uh, Amazon 04 FF Sazabi can be yours for 1,980 yen, 15 US, and of course also from Fukuoka's Gundam Side F. And the third one was all of the details for the High Grade Aerial Permit Score 6. Reservations went up on P Bandai on the 22nd, and it turns out that I was mistaken about what was going to be included with the kit. I thought it was just going to be a blue version of the regular High Grade, like that the gun arm system would just be blue instead of red. But it does have a few extra bells and whistles, as well as a higher price tag at 2,200 yen, 17 US. Uh, the most obvious color differences are, as I just mentioned, the gun arm system is now blue instead of red, and the beam effect parts are now green instead of blue, as they should be. Um, but the blue, yellow, and gray plastics are now also slightly different with a metallic shine added to them. And we're also getting one extra part, a clear blue base with the Witram Mercury logo on it. So again, it is somewhat more different than I was expecting. And in other Gunpla news then, last week Friday, reservations went up for the high-grade gym Moroccan front spec over on Japanese P Bandai. It is currently slated for a June release, and for 2,200 yen, 17 US, you're getting a beam saber, cannon, beam rifle, early model beam spray gun, shield, and water slide decals. And for some more Origin and Duan's Island kits, there was a third wave of reservations for the high-grade, high-mobility Zaku Surface Type Egba Custom, and a fourth wave of reservations for the high-grade Full Armor Gundam. And then we also got the box arts for the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Tornado Gundam and the Gunpla Kun Deluxe set with runner version recreation parts. And on the figure front then, we also got some cool news. Not nearly as much as the Gunpla news, but it's always a good day when more advanced of Zeta stuff is announced. On Friday, pre-orders went live for the Metal Robot Spirits TR6 Wound Ward Raw 2 optional part set. And to avoid any confusion, because let's face it, Advance of Zeta can be pretty confusing with all of the stuff that's going on there. Um, in most sources, you will see these optional parts listed as the Frutodu 2, which then combine with the Wound Ward to form the Wound Ward Raw. But in some sources, and now products as well, this form is also called the Wound Ward Raw 2. So the Raw and the Raw 2 are the same thing. And the main parts of this set then are four claw units, a composite shield booster, which is the giant rifle that can also turn into a claw, and connector pieces to attach the Frutodu 2 to the regular Hazel. Because of course, 
everything from Advanced of Zeta is compatible with each other. So definitely not a bad deal for 7,700 yen, 58 US. And the other figure was announced a few days later. The Robot Spirits version anime RX-78 GP-00 Gundam Prototype Unit Zero Blossom. And that is everything that we know at the moment. But more details will be released tomorrow or today depending on your time zone. And this week, a very special item also went up for pre-order on P Bandai. To celebrate the 35th anniversary of the Cardass cards, Bandai will be releasing a special miniature Cardass vending machine for 8,800 yen, 67 US. Included with the machine is a special new Gundam card, nine test cards, which I'm guessing are just blanks, um, and four special coins which I'm guessing you can use with the machine. Because yes, it is a fully functional vending machine. Um, and it is designed to also take two 10 yen coins just like the larger machines that it's based on. And they even stated that they paid close attention to accurately reproduce the crunching sound that the handle makes when you uh, turn it for maximum nostalgic impact. And in addition to being a cart dispenser, they also say that you can use it as a piggy bank. But for this purpose, I really hope that it also takes coins other than 10 yen uh, because, you know, 10 yen is less than a dime, so that's not really going to be adding up a whole lot for, <laughs> uh, for saving purposes. But on to the Witch from Mercury news. On Sunday, it was announced that a drama CD will be included with the Witch from Mercury 2nd Blu-ray. And on this CD will be two episodes. What Miorine Wants, uh, featuring Suleta and Miorine, and the Jeturk Dorms Welcome Party, featuring Gyul and Lauda. And I'm especially curious about the Jeturk episode, because they don't specify who the Welcome Party is for, at least not that I could see and or find. Is it going to be one of the main Jeturks that it's for, like um, when Gyul joined the dorm, or are they maybe going to go the route of them welcoming a new nameless student to the dorm, aka you the listener, which would definitely be a cool experience. And what's also cool is that over at the Gundam base Tokyo, a new Witch from Mercury exhibition has popped up. They've got a 2 meter statue of the Aerial Rebuild, dioramas that were previously seen at the Witch from Mercury Expo, and of course a bunch of displays of the characters, the story, and the gunpla, including the newly announced Permit Score 6 Aerial. Next up then we had two special digest videos, one focusing on the Shibuya Jack and one focusing on both the Shibuya Jack and the Witch from Mercury Expo. I'll have both linked down below, but they do seem to be region locked to Japan, so you'll need a VPN like NordVPN to get around that annoying region lock. And as always, you can get a sweet discount and support the channel by using the link down below or the code KKRT. And it is definitely impressive to see 13 different screens across the Shibuya cityscape displaying a Gundam advertisement, and what makes it extra cool is that it's not just the same thing being displayed on all 13 screens. Uh, sometimes all 13 do synchronize and show the same thing, but for most of the time they do have their own thing going on that still does make for a nice whole experience. So I definitely had to watch the video multiple times to like see everything that was going on. But to watch the final new video of this week, you'll have to journey all the way to the life-sized Unicorn Gundam, or, you know, find a YouTube video of someone who recorded it, because over there, a Witch from Mercury video has joined the lineup from March the 18th. The Witch from Mercury Season 1 Digest Movie Version Wall G. It'll be shown every day at 7 and 8.30pm, and there is no set end date as of yet. 
In other news then, Bandai opened up a small temporary Plamo amusement park called the Play Play Plamo Park. The Osaka location was open from the 18th to the 19th and the Tokyo location will be open from the 25th to the 27th. Entrance is free and participants will be able to build the Ecoplaw RX-782 and Velociraptor and they can also receive an Airplacoon keychain made out of recycled plastic. And what is especially cool about this thing isn't just that it comes with a QR code on the back, but that it's actually made fresh right in front of your eyes at the machine. So it's still warm when you receive it. The freshest Gumpla experience there is. And if you want to check out the commercial for the event, I will have that linked down below. But a venue that will be open for a significantly longer time is the Sunrise World Tokyo that opened up last week, Friday. And like I said last week, you'll be able to see a lot of things about Sunrise's past, including, of course, a lot of Gundam stuff. Uh, for example, in the permanent exhibition, they've got one of the first Gundam action figures, if not the first Gundam action figure. The Gundam Deluxe Combiner set that comes with the G-Armor and some other interesting weapons as well. And if I'm not mistaken, this is from before Bandai stepped in and made the much superior Gundam model kits and is instead made by a company called Clover. Uh, the ones who were also responsible for changing the Gundam's color scheme from a dull, more realistic gray to the very flashy tricolor color scheme that we're now all familiar with. For better or for worse. And the first special exhibition then are the 15 works that put Sunrise on the map, which of course includes the first Gundam. Then if you want some music, it was announced that Nobody Knows His all-time best album will be getting a two-disc LP limited edition set on May the 3rd. It'll go for 5,500 yen, 41 US, and includes the ending theme for SD Gundam Force. And we also got a cool new Mobile Suit Girl highlight this week, the Gyan Girl. The Gyan has never looked so good ever since its overhaul with the High Grade Revive. The legs are a bit generic, but I love what Akitaka did with the head, and especially that menacing mono eye. The shield and the saber are also looking really nice, and overall, it's just a really cool redesign that I had to share. In the gaming news then, in Gundam Battle Operation 2, the Goof F-Unit Thunderbolt version flies to the occasion. In Gundam Breaker Mobile, we got the Tall Strike Gundam Glitter and V2 Assault Buster Gundam as part of the Sokai Festival. And the Cobalt Space Pirate event has gone live. From UCN Gage, we got a really awesome music video and digital distribution of the original soundtrack, both linked down below. And from Iron Blooded Orphans G, we got a new mobile suit variation. Named after a demon that literally everyone seems to pronounce in a different way. I watched three videos on the demon, and in all three, they pronounced his name a different way. Uh, I got Hagenti, Hagenti, and Hagenti, so take your pick. Um, what I am certain of is that the Gundam is owned by the Elion family, and that during the Calamity War, it was used by Angelica Elion, one of the original seven stars and that despite being a lightweight unit, it was able to dominate the battlefield with its two katana blades and huge gun. And currently it is stored in a hangar at the Vingolf Gallarhorn Earth HQ. As for the things you could get this week then, starting Monday, the Exia Bust began appearing in Gachapon machines across Japan, meaning that for 500 yen a spin, for US, you can either get the standard armor set, clear armor set or frame set with a lighting unit. And on the same day for 400 yen a spin, 3 US, you could get the second lineup of the Witch from Mercury acrylic stands. Featuring Suleta in her incubation party outfit, Murine in her incubation outfit, 
Gyul, Elan, Shadik, Lauda, Felzi and Petra and Prospera. For this week's reading material then, there was the Spring Edition of Great Mechanics G, which has a special on Witch from Mercury's mobile suit, and a summary of Recon Gista in G's movies by Tomino himself. Um, there was Weekend Hobby Life, Recon Gista in G Mechanics and World, the 11th chapter of Gunham's sequel has become available for free online, linked down below, and it is definitely worth checking it out, even if just for the new Gundam in there that is very Anubis inspired. And then the 8th chapter of the Legend of Dragonite comic was released online, also linked down below. Moving on to this week's Gundam Apparel then, where Strict G kicked things off with a collaboration with Kushitani. And together, they created some Gundam-themed bike wear. For 25,080 yen, 190 US, there's a pair of biker gloves in either RX-782, Sharp Zaku or Standard Zaku colors. For 21,780 yen, 165 US, you can get a hoodie with reflective emblems styled after either the RX-782 or Shar Zaku. For 18,480 yen, 140 US, there is the Red Comet's hip bag. And finally, for 9,350 yen, 71 US, there is the RX-782 or Red Comet key case. Over at Banqueta then, they started by bringing back the laundry bags. You might remember the RX-782, Zaku 2 and Dom laundry bags from quite a while back, but now the Gyan, Goof and Zagok have also joined the lineup for 1,540 yen each, 12 US. And when you think about it, like Gundam themed laundry bags really should have had a marine unit in their first lineup. Like, I'm surprised we don't have an Ag guy yet. Um, and all of these are slated for a May release. And yesterday then, pre-orders went up for the Cecilia acrylic stand, which includes some of her sarcastic remarks. A perfect representation of the character for 1,870 yen, um, around 13, 14 US, and she's also slated for a May release. And with that, let's wrap things up with the currently ongoing Gundam.info poll. Which colony would you rather live in? Texas Colony, uh, the one from the origin, a very important distinction. Zoom City from the OG Gundam. Moon Moon from Double Zeta Gundam. Or Industrial 7 from Unicorn. And for once, the Twitter version of the poll and the main website version of the poll are actually in agreement, even down to the percentages, which are very close as well. We have Moon Moon, Zoom City and Texas Colony all very close together, with Industrial 7 having a commanding lead with over half of the votes. So basically it's already decided who's going to win and I can definitely understand why you would prefer to live in that colony over the other three. Um, so yeah, those are definitely going to be the big contest here. But yeah, like I said, all three have some major drawbacks to live in. Moon Moon is... Moon Moon? I don't think that if I could live in the Universal Century, that I'd want to live in the one colony with a cult that is obsessed with abandoning technology. Not to mention that the walls weren't thick and strong enough to protect the people living there from the radiation, significantly cutting their life expectancy. So yeah, I, I'm expecting that to stay in last place. Um, then, uh, Texas Colony, Th things were fine for a while, but then, you know, th things happened. And Zoom City then, considering it's the capital of Xeon, I wouldn't be surprised that there was quite some political unrest, both before and after the war. I mean... We've seen how people are dealt with after wars who were on the losing political spectrum, so 
yeah, there's that. Um, but if you want to vote in the poll, I will, of course, have the links down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. This week, also a big thanks to Gundam.info for featuring me. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.